Welcome to another one of our Bluebeam Me Up How To tutorials, brought to you by Brighter Graphics Limited, where we show you how to maximize the potential of your investment in Bluebeam Review. Brighter Graphics are the oldest established Bluebeam partner and your premium Bluebeam solutions provider. Let's get started. In this video, we are going to show you how to use measurements in the markups list in Bluebeam Review. The markups list is one of the most popular tools in review and absolutely vital when it comes to takeoffs and estimation. It extends reviews functionality from providing simple visual markups to a powerful tracking and reporting tool. The markups list tracks all the information associated with a given markup, including author, date and time, comments, measurements, status, and subject, among many others. Additional metadata can also be added to any markup using custom columns, which we have gone over in another video. Finally, all this valuable information can be exported to PDF reports or Excel files. In this example you will notice that our file already has several takeoffs on it. Click the markups list button to open the panel if it is not already open. Before you begin, it's good to know how you can get the most out of it on screen. Drag the top border of the list up to extend the panel so you can see more of it. Click and drag the icon away if you want to move the panel elsewhere or need more space. Power users sometimes even move the panel to another monitor to get as much room as possible. To place the markups list back in the original spot, drag it back to its original location. With the markups list open, click on a markup on the document and notice the corresponding row in the markups list. Or click on a row and it will highlight that corresponding markup on the sheet. Review has a number of data columns that are on by default which will vary according to what profile you are using. In the takeoffs profile, there are a number of default columns, like subject, layer, space, page label, and status, as well as other columns specific to measurements. But take a look at the label column. This is an additional data point that is often used to add further details to the subject. For example, if there are two different types of concrete flooring, the label could have these types listed. Another default column is legend. This displays which legend, if any, the markup is listed in. Feel free to pause the video here to read more on the default columns that appear in the takeoffs profile and what data they hold. To change what columns are showing, click on the markups list menu and mouse over columns. A long list of possible columns appears and can be switched on and off with a click of the mouse. We will go ahead and turn off the ones not needed. If working with a multi-page PDF, a good practice is to keep page labels turned on which makes sorting by pages easier. For this tutorial, turn on the checkmark column. This column can be used as a progress column where each takeoff measurement can be checked to show it's been reviewed. To reorder columns, click on the column and drag it in front of the column where it should be placed. The markups list data can be sorted by any column. Click on the column header to sort by ascending or descending order. Click subject, as that will sort the markup type. Notice that the markups are now grouped by subject in alphanumeric order. Click on the subject header a second time to reverse that order. This is one reason a detailed subject line is such a useful feature. Another thing to notice is that subject group totals are calculated by that subject line, which is great for quickly viewing high-level numbers or for estimating measurements for a bid. There are a few other details to point out about this data. The comments column by default will give you the measurement for those types of markups, so if it was an area measurement, you'll see area. Since this is a text-based field, it includes the unit of measurement as well. If you prefer to see more measurements in comments, go to the properties toolbar and edit the captions shown. This drop-down allows you to check on and off any combination of available measurements. Be aware that this will also reflect in the markup as well. The other measurement columns like area. Length, volume, wall area, and counts are all numeric fields, so it will only show numbers that can be calculated. Keep in mind that depth can be changed from the units drop down. In addition to sorting the data, you can also filter data based on your chosen parameters as well. Filters provide an easy way to emphasize or hide certain parts of your estimate. 
This way, you can focus only on flooring, for example, while hiding tile or other takeoffs. This is very useful when creating reports as well. To filter, click on the filter button at the top of the markups list. When it's selected it will be highlighted in orange. This toggle button can be turned on and off to apply the filters you've selected. Go to the subject column, click on the icon, and select flooring. This tells review to filter out all other markups except for those with a subject of flooring. You can see they are hidden in the markups list, and, on the page itself the takeoffs appear with a dim gray color. You can control the amount of dimming, by changing a setting under review. Preferences. Interface. Markups list. Filtered annotation dim. You can create a custom filter by clicking on from an individual filter, selecting the custom option and setting multiple filter options. For example, maybe you want to filter out everything equaling toilets and anything containing sink to isolate your restroom features. Click OK to apply the filter. If you click on the filter button again in the markups list, it turns off the filtering and all markups reappear. When a document contains thousands of markup entries, filtering becomes a very useful tool for managing and organizing those markups. Thank you for watching. We hope you found the video useful. You can visit our website, www.brightergraphics.com, for more videos in the How To series and all things Bluebeam Review. We at Brighter Graphics, welcome your feedback to help us to improve.